and welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Uh, I'm Scott uh, and I'm going to film a solo video without Nell today um, and I wanted to talk about books for vegans and vegetarians. Um, so I don't think I've said this before on this channel but I don't eat meat and I don't drink milk. I do have a little bit of cheese and I do eat eggs but I have what is essentially quite a low animal product diet. Um, and quite high on the plant-based um, and hopefully at some point I'll go and and go full vegan but I'm just not there yet um, I was raised a vegetarian so I've spent my whole life I've never had a steak ever in my life uh, is essentially or a burger or chicken wings or any of those other things uh, so I definitely identify as um, uh, with that group of people. Not that I'm going to talk about it, I'm not going to beat you over the head with it. I think that the ethical arguments are pretty out there and obvious and if you want to explore them you can and if you don't want to explore them you don't have to. But if you are a vegetarian or vegan you're used to experiencing the world a little bit different and um, and I think that there are a few books that uh, that are actually written out there that you would enjoy a little bit more than the regular reader. Um, all of these books can be enjoyed by uh, omnivores as well, so don't feel like this is an exclusion to you if you want to watch it. Um, okay, so the first book I'm going to recommend is um, Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake. Um, uh, Margaret Atwood is a vegetarian, by the way. So if um, if you're looking for authors that don't eat meat, that's a good one. Um, Oryx and Crake is about a lot of things, and not many of them have a lot to do with uh, vegetarianism. And nonetheless, she has created a society where there are a few ethically funky things to do with meat. She's created a society where soy-based products get eaten regularly. Uh, she's created a society where there are these genetically engineered chickens that are basically just breast uh, with a hole that opens up to be spoon-fed um, sustenance. And that's a real interesting idea that, that gets explored a little bit. Uh, it's, you know, it's also a fantastic book and it's about a lot of other things. It's about Big Pharma and, um, and corruption and government and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, from the, the vegan vegetarian point of view, she, she has created this world where food is... Um, is different, is genetically engineered, is is different, and something really interesting to explore in a dystopian format. Um, the next book I'm going to recommend is this classic here, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. This book is um, published, I can see on the back, published in 1906, uh, which makes it 124 years old. Uh, this tells the story of an immigrant who comes to America and who gets work in the meat industry. Um, and uh, that immigrant is then mistreated and it <coughs> basically points out all the horrible corruption that existed in the meat industry at the time. Um, and, and you see there's a lot of, <coughs> there's a lot of corruption in industries in all industries around the world at the moment uh, and the meat industry is certainly not excluded from from that and you can see how these big industries work and how <coughs> sorry all right and how profit is valued over uh, over workers over what they're doing and all that so it really it's it's it was really quite an explosive exploitation of of the meat industry at the time, um, and then uh, it's got elements of 
uh, a treatment of refugees, poverty, and all of that other gritty lefty stuff that I love hearing about and reading about. Um, and I've, I've compared Upton Sinclair to people like George Orwell and Emile Zola before. Um, a bit different, um, a bit more American. Well, he is American and the other two aren't, but he, he has the stylistically more American as well. Um, the last book I'm going to recommend in this video uh, is Han Khan's The uh, the Vegetarian. Um, this is the book I have read. I read this book in January and and it was brutal. Um, it is the book that portrays what it's like to be a vegan or a vegetarian in the most uncomfortable honesty there is. You know, it's it's sort of you know, I'm not saying that vegetarians and vegans get a, a trot as bad as uh, black people did uh, do now, even let alone back when Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. But it's that level of, you know, you can really see in, in Uncle Tom's Cabin how bad the plight of was, or how bad the the conditions were were for black people and how how mistreated they were and you can see the sort of discrimination that vegetarians get in in the start of this book um, and it's a fascinating read and I you know as as a vegetarian I don't try to make a big deal about every time that something annoys me and I'm not thought about but you know, it does upset me if I go to a men uh, go to a restaurant and there's nothing on the menu for me, and to have that portrayed in in a book made me feel like seen, and and that was really good. And and as a middle class white male, I don't experience a lot of uh, a lot of discrimination. You know, I'm I'm straight, I'm cisgendered, I'm all of those things, but. Um, I am a hippie lefty socialist, so that's where I get a lot of my discrimination from. And being a vegetarian uh, is something that that uh, uh, doesn't make me fit in with society. Um, and so that gives me, you know, 0.1% of what other people are feeling uh, or experiencing. Um, so, it, but, and it was and it was nice to be seen. In, in this book. Um, this book is brutal in, in what else it discusses. Um, it is... And when I say a book's brutal, I just want to point out that I love reading miserable books. I love reading books that take me to places that are uncomfortable and, and make me experience other things. I love gritty books. I love books about drug addictions, books about rape, those sort of things that are exactly what I want to read about. So when I say The Vegetarian was uncomfortable, know that what happens in it is pretty, pretty bad. Um, you know, and and it, it also comes into a book, um, it, it's, it, there's a comparative analysis in this where she starts the book as a vegetarian and I think everybody can agree that a grown woman should have consent, uh, should should be listened to over her choice of what she would like to eat and not have that dictated for her. But then later on in the book, she develops uh, anorexia and, and have that be a contrasting storyline is, is really interesting. And um, I was scared reading that, that it was going to end up from what I thought was, you know, something that was giving me visibility. I thought that was going to be something that was making fun of me. And, and I'm very glad to say that it didn't end up like that. Um, but yeah, so that was a bleak book. So these are three books I recommend for vegan and vegetarian readers. So just to recap, 
Uh, Oryx and Craig by Margaret Atwood, fantastic book, Margaret Atwood, great writer. Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, um, brilliant book, classic, lasted over a hundred years, always books lasting over a hundred years and still being relevant is an excellent sign of a good book. And um, Pulitzer Prize winner, winning book, I oh, know, sorry, not Pulitzer Prize, um, Man Booker Prize, wrong, excellent prize, uh, International Man Booker Prize rather, um, Han Kan uh, from Korea's The, the Vegetarian. They're the three books I recommend uh, if you would like to learn more about that or if you uh, are more about being a vegan or a vegetarian or if you are a vegan or a vegetarian. Um, if you've read any of those three books, let me know in the comments, let me know what you thought. Um, if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, are there any books that you recommend um, and are you interested in finding out more? Anyway, I have hoped you, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I've been Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Remember, ideas are more powerful. They're more powerful than uh, food choices. Bye.